the first thing I did on arrival was to visit Bremont's stand, partly because it was closest to the cloakroom by the main entrance, but largely because Bremont was the brand I most wanted to see. It was my main curiosity for this visit. If you've seen my previous videos, you might already appreciate that I've long been a Bremont fan, having bought many of their watches. And as one might expect, the role of the two founders, brothers Nick and Giles English, has changed since the arrival of Davide Serrato, the new Bremont CEO who came on the scene less than a year ago. And as you may have seen from the various brand teasers issued by Bremont Online, Tuesday the 9th of April was to be Bremont's big reveal, when they showcase many of the changes being brought in. Since Serato's arrival as CEO, a lot has happened at Bremont, and quickly. The night before Watches and Wonders, I received an email from Bremont, an early preview of what's to follow. So, on arrival at the Bremont booth, I wasn't surprised to see the company's new branding, featuring what they call the Wayfinder. Although, I have to confess, it did seem a, a little surreal. And then there's the entirely new range of tool watches, presented within three themes, air, land and sea, the sense of adventure being embodied in the latest brand ambassador, the super-talented and highly accomplished mountain athlete and award-winning director, Jimmy Chin, who appears to echo the take-it-further strapline in everything he does. Shortly after Serato was appointed, I read an article in the FT that quoted him as saying that in five years' time, he would be opening a case of champagne to celebrate achieving the milestone of having sold 30,000 watches in a year, amongst other self-imposed targets. To achieve this in the time frame requires a three-fold increase in the annual volume of Bremont watch sales, so something radical was always going to be necessary in order to measure up to this aspiration. And radical it is. Davide is a really good talker, and he verbally articulates his vision well. There is logic to his approach. He's created families of Bremont watches that are smaller, with unique and distinctive design characteristics, and he's slashed the retail prices to broaden the appeal. As a longtime Bremont fan, my concern is what mass market volumes and hitting a price point does to a brand. Plus, I can't help but struggle with the new logo. Whilst the watches I saw were decent, each time I looked at the dial and saw the Wayfinder emblem, a couple of things spring to mind. Firstly, I don't recognise it as being a Bremont watch. And secondly, I find that the logo is too detailed to be visually coherent when shrunk down to fit on a watch dial. Looking at the comments online, the initial response to the new logo is largely poor. For what it's worth, Mrs. Watch Enthusiast London thinks it's clip art. In her opinion, it's so bad that she believes Davide Serato must be some form of mole or double agent. Having now spent two days thinking about the changes and after revisiting the booth to listen to more of what the brand had to say, I think I feel slightly better about the watches. On wrist, they do surprise to the upside. And the repeated and frequent images and videos online do help to make the new range of watches seem more familiar. But for all the good talk and imagery that Davide Serrato and the Bremont marketing team put out, what I believe is missing is more of an explainer involving the absent founders and perhaps their outward involvement in some way, if nothing else to hand over the baton. So far, the brand has been pretty silent on what role Nick and Giles are to, are to play going forward, and I can't help but think that this needs to be addressed within the new narrative. Perhaps I'm too emotionally invested to see straight on this. Being completely bloodless about it and setting my emotions aside, I don't doubt that Bremont will eventually succeed. However, the extent to which I remain a Bremont customer is a little less certain.